Hey everyone, Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Today we're exploring the best home server virtualization projects that you can start this year. Now, whether you're a seasoned veteran or just starting out with your first home lab, these projects can help you master the world of virtualization and learn new skills at the same time. So let's get started. Now, first up is nested virtualization. It sounds complex, right? But think of nested virtualization as inception for your hypervisors. Uh, you're running essentially a hypervisor inside of a, another hypervisor inside a virtual machine. Now, this setup is perfect for testing complex configurations, clustering multiple hypervisor nodes without needing the physical hardware. Uh, for example, a cluster of three servers would traditionally require three different physical servers. However, with nested virtualization, you can have a single server, physical hardware, running the hypervisor. Then you can create three virtual machines that are essentially cluster nodes, and you can form your cluster from those three virtual machines for experimentation, for labbing, for learning, whatever the case may be, without needing the extra hardware. Now, it also allows you to use all of the normal tools that you get with virtual machines, such as snapshots. If you are in the middle of learning a new skill or figuring out a configuration and it doesn't go so well, you can simply restore a snapshot, rinse and repeat, and your home lab projects uh, with your hypervisors running as virtual machines are no different. You can simply restore snapshots as needed and reset your environment to a known good state. Now, as an example, lately I've been experimenting with Proxmox clustering and Ceph HCI, and I've been able to do that right from virtual machines running in either VMware vSphere or Proxmox VE. So running Proxmox inside of Proxmox. And I can tell you, it's been a game changer over the years for myself personally and learning new skills and experimenting with new technologies. Next, setting up a virtualization cluster. Starting with a single machine is normally where we all start. As time goes along, we want to move into clustering our resources, uh, allowing you to experiment with high availability and failover protections, whether you're wanting to do that for home lab services or you want to learn those skills for production environments. When you create a cluster, you're essentially pooling those multiple hypervisor resources into a logical construct that runs the compute, the networking, and storage resources available to the cluster, all as a logical unit. So if you have a failure or you need to take a host down for maintenance, those VMs simply can be moved or hot migrated, live migrated over to another host. Now, you can start small with a cluster. And one of the things I really love seeing now, we have so many great mini PC configurations that are cost effective, they're power efficient. And as we mentioned in the first project, you can even use nested virtualization. If you don't want to invest in more hardware, you can simply have a single server, uh, use nested virtualization and set up that virtualization cluster running inside of virtual machines. Project number three is HCI storage. Let's talk about storage with HCI or hyperconverged infrastructure. HCI is a cool technology that aggregates local storage devices or hard drives within a single server uh, among multiple servers, and it allows you to create a shared storage pool without needing physical appliances like a SAN or a NAS. Uh, there are many options in this space to choose from, such as the proprietary VMware vSAN, if you uh, know and use that in enterprise, or there's also Proxmox HCI storage or XCP ExoSAN. Experiment with VMware vSAN or Ceph storage, and I can assure you, you're going to be hooked with software-defined storage that HCI solutions really allow you to make use of, either in the home lab or production. Project number four is setting up a Docker container host. 
Building a Docker container host is easier than you think, and it really opens up a whole world of possibilities. Not only self-hosted services, we're learning new skills such as CI/CD pipelines. Running self-hosted services in Docker also has advantages because you can essentially use less hardware for running services that you normally would have needed full virtual machines to run on top of a hypervisor. But instead, you can configure a single or even multiple Docker hosts running as those virtual machines and then have a myriad of services on top running on those Docker hosts as containers. Now also containers are the heart of modern cloud computing. So if you master Docker, you're going to be able to up your cloud skills and you're also going to be able to run more efficiently in your home lab and spinning up self-hosted services. Network virtualization, another worthy project in 2024. Exploring network virtualization lets you create virtual networks that extend subnets to different locations or manage networks with code. With network virtualization, you're doing essentially the same thing that we've done for years now with compute virtualization. You are abstracting the network layer from the physical network hardware, and instead you run what is referred to as a network overlay in software and that overlay runs on top of the physical network underlay. Now what tools can you use for this? Well tools like VMware NSX which is an enterprise solution uh, from VMware allows you to play around with software defined networking. But also now the recent versions of Proxmox 8.x include Proxmox SDN, making it easy to get your hands on network virtualization and being able to set that up in your home lab and play around with network virtualization in 2024. Section number six is especially a hot topic right now, learning a different hypervisor. Recently with the Broadcom acquisition of VMware and the massive fallout due to the way that Broadcom has handled that transition as well as the looming price increases for VMware, many are looking at alternatives. There are many alternatives to VMware in the industry. Of course, there's also the proprietary Microsoft hypervisor, Hyper-V, but there's also the open source variants. There are KVM, Proxmox, as we've mentioned a number of times, but also XCPNG. And these can give you a great hypervisor for the home lab, but also in production environments. And I think it's a smart thing to start picking up these open source hypervisor skills, as I know many, even in the enterprise sector, are starting to look at their options there. Which solution makes the best sense in terms of cost? and features. So learning these different hypervisors is going to enrich your skill set, but it's also going to prepare you for any changes that are looming later in 2024 and into the next few years. Last but not least is learning public cloud technologies. Integrating public cloud resources with your home lab like AWS or Azure uh, really helps to round out your understanding of cloud computing and on-premises enterprise data center technology that we've known and used for decades now. Most of the cloud hyperscalers like AWS, Azure, Google, they all offer free tier subscriptions that allow many hours of compute and other resources to play around with. So this is your chance to play around with cloud computing and to understand real world applications being built out in the cloud in 2024 and beyond. Well, that wraps up our guide to the best home server virtualization projects in 2024. Remember the key is to start where you are and expand as you go. Each project offers a unique learning opportunity. So make the right choice for you and your career path or your home lab environment. If you found this guide helpful, don't don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe for more tech tips and tutorials. Well, let me know in the comments what virtualization projects you are undertaking in 2024. Are they ones we have considered on the list or is it something different entirely? Be sure to check out the VHT forums as well to get detailed help from the community, from myself and many others available to help ones through various home lab challenges. Well, until next time, keep experimenting and learning and I will see you guys on on the next video.